in this video uh, I'm going to take you through a very standard type of word problems that involves a quadratic function though I shouldn't really call it word problem because you're not gonna see a whole lot of uh, words here it's more an application sort of real uh, word use the parabolas and the quadratic function so what I have here is a building a lovely green field and let's say for the sake of argument that you are in this building and apparently a little bored uh, because you decide to entertain yourself by learning out the window and throwing a ball as high uh, up in the into uh, the air as you possibly can so let's see say you are here in this window and um, you go ahead you take your ball or your throw up in the air as high as you can it's going to reach a maximum point turn around and uh, starts falling down back to earth coming down like this so, so if you look uh, at the shape that i have just drawn let's say your ball is right around here right now in the process you'll notice i have something that looks a lot of, like parabola and parabola is the graph of for a parabola goes with a quadratic function and any kind of problem that involves uh, uh, throwing something, dropping something, kicking, kicking something, anything like uh, that is gonna to have a shape that's like a parabola. And so these problems are very common, as I said, word problems for this kind uh, of topic. So let's go ahead and sort of um, take shape. So first of our y-axis, the y-axis is going to um, represent where we started this ball. So it's going to be approximately here. That's my y. The uh, x is going to represent the ground. So here we are talking uh, right around here. And this is my x. And uh, the parabola is the graph that we have the, on this x uh, axis uh, or axis. Uh, each parabola has sort of defining key characteristics that created or form this shape. Uh, first off, right here, the y-intercept. That's the initial value, that's the, the starting point, the height uh, of the ball you can see here uh, when you throw it. Uh, and uh, next up, we have that maximum point where it gets to up uh, here at the top. We call that the vertex. So let me put that in. Um, next up here, it hit the ground, which is our X intercept. It's a little hard to see it with the grass here put my line in this is our x intercept and for these problems usually the concept that matches the x intercept um, it's the idea of again hitting the ground now for these problems i'm not gonna ask where we started and when it finished where it hit the ground or um, or what we will do maximum no no none of those things what i want is a specific hit i want to know when is this ball reached 200 feet so first off we need the equation the model that goes with this as i said it's go gonna be a quadratic function what we're going to have is of is h of t the head of the ball at time t be equal to negative 16 t squared plus uh, 112 t plus 14 and as i said before what i want to know is when does this ball get to a head of 200 those are both zeros by the way so 200 feet since I gave you the head of the ball, uh, not the time, we are going. We are gonna actually use that to represent uh, or to replace the age. So instead of just plugging in two hundred, I'm gonna to set this entire equation equal to two hundred. This is gonna to give me two hundred equals negative. Uh, 16 squared plus 2, 112 t plus 
40 and that's the equation I need to solve and when I find t I find my time this is the quadratic equation you know that you'll notice we have a t squared here and that's the highest degree term for quadratic equation we have a number of different ways to solve it but most of them involve getting everything to one side meaning all the terms together so what i'm gonna to do help with that uh, with that is i'm gonna to go ahead and subtract 200 from both sides that way i get this equal to zero and that step is a critical for most quadratic equation now i need to go ahead and pan up here because i have run out of room so our drawing is going to go away for a little bit but we will bring it back later the equation that we have now now after we have done this is zero which is what we wanted equal to negative 16 t squared plus 112 t plus minus uh, 160. now we need to solve this and there are a lot of different techniques we can use but generally speaking the easiest technique if you can do it it's two factor now i don't know about you but i'm not really keen on trying to factor this way it's right now so i will these numbers are pretty big and it's gonna be difficult to try to do it so the first thing i want to do is take out a greatest common factor if it, if i can um factor up out some of the numbers to make them smaller it's gonna be a lot a lot easy to me and to you guys and in this example the greatest common factor is actually negative 16 so if i factor that out this quadratic becomes a lot nicer to deal with uh, doing that I'm gonna to get squared minus 70 plus 10 again a much nicer kind of thing of thing to actually factor looking at this we want to two numbers that multiply to positive 10 but add up to negative 7 the, the two that are going to work negative 2 and negative 5 so I get 0 equals negative 6 when I fact when the factor that out it doesn't go away we need we need to include it there times t minus two times t minus five so uh, using the zero product rule what we can say is each of this push potently called equal zero and that's a way that we would get the whole thing equal to zero well there is no point setting negative uh, 16 to zero it just doesn't work but our next one t minus two that potentially could equal zero so well we will do that we have t minus two equals zero and our next one t minus five that called also equals zero if either of those are the case whole things equals zero so this first one t minus two equals zero when t equals two and here this one equals zero when t equals five so after solving our equation what we end up with are two different answers t answers t equals two and t equals five so let's go back to our drawing for a second and look at what this means in terms of, of the context of the problem so back up here uh, we get the following answers again we had t equals 2 t equals 5 and um, for many word problems sometimes only one answer out of the two is valid but there we actually have both answers being valid the idea being that we threw this ball up into the air and wanted to see when it got got a hit of 200 feet well if 
I draw that head and say this was my 200 feet right there. You netize the ball and went up in the air until it got to 200 feet. Then it kept going all the way up to its vertex, came back down, dropped it, got to 200 feet again, and then continued dropping all the way down the ground. So our final answer for these problems is that the ball reaches a height of 200 feet at two different times. Let me switch my pen color here. Again, it uh, reaches this height at two different times, at, uh, at two seconds, a meaning two seconds after the ball was thrown. And again, at five seconds, five seconds after the ball was thrown. And um, those two times are our answers. So uh, this drawing was not very to scale. Again, it was just an illustration to help you see what was going on. But let me show you a more exact sort of mathematical graph of this exact same, same equation. In this next slide right here, we have the actual nice formal graph of that same function we were looking at just a second ago and this is a graph of h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 112 t plus 14 so we will notice for the parts of this graph we are go gonna start right here at a head of 14 the y-intercept is our initial value. The ball goes up in the air until it gets to this hair we're looking for. The red line here represents 200 feet. Uh, uh, you will notice the 200 on the uh, on the y-axis right there. The ball then continues up in the air a little bit higher and uh, until it gets to its maximum, its vertex. Then it comes back down here again to 200 feet. And if you look closely, this point right here that we were looking at the y is 200. But down here, the x is at two seconds. So when x is two, or in this instance, ball goes up to its head, comes back down, gets to 200 again. And if we go ahead and look at this down on our x-axis, you notice that that's also at x equals five, or here t equals five. So those are the two times that we get that value. So that's how this works, how these parabolas work, and how you can solve application with them. And that's all guys, goodbye.